Hey everybody, my name is Cedric Clyburn, and in this tutorial, we're going to deploy a full stack burn application in just minutes. And we're going to use the Kubernetes Atlas operator to connect our backend to MongoDB Atlas using a Kubernetes secret. Now, deploying databases in Kubernetes can be a really tricky thing, but tasks like adding persistence, database maintenance, and more can all be handled using MongoDB Atlas. Now, for this tutorial, you're going to need to have kubectl installed on your system, and I'll be using Minikube to run a local Kubernetes cluster, and JQ for converting our secret later on in the video. We'll also use a free Atlas cluster, and of course, everything in this tutorial is completely free, and the links are in the description below. So, let's take a look at the MongoDB Atlas operator by deploying an example MERN application with a back end and a front end. You can find this example app repository in the description or go to github.com slash mongodb dash developer to find it there. Now, this application uses a three-tier application architecture, which is going to have the following layout within our Kubernetes cluster. So to briefly overview this layout, we've got a back end with a deployment that will ensure that we have two pods running at any given time, and the same applies for our front end. Traffic is redirected and configured by ingress, meaning API request route to our back end, and everything else will go to our front end. The back end of our application is responsible for the connection to the database, where we'll be using MongoDB Atlas and the operator to link to an Atlas instance. Now, to simplify the installation process of the application, we can use a single kubectl command to deploy our entire demo application on Kubernetes and work from there. Now, the single YAML file that we'll use includes all of the deployments and services for the back end and front end of our application and uses containers created with the Docker files in the repository. First, let's start by cloning this demo repository that contains the starting source code. We'll do a quick git clone, and then we'll go ahead and hop into the folder. Secondly, as part of this tutorial, you'll need to run Minikube Tunnel to access our services at localhost. So we'll go ahead and open up a new tab and do Minikube Tunnel. Now let's go ahead and deploy everything within our Kubernetes cluster by applying the following application.yaml file. So we'll do a quick kubectl apply, give it a file name, go within the Kubernetes folder, and we'll select the application.yaml file. Now we can take a look at what we have running in our cluster by using the kubectl git command. So we'll do kubectl git all to see everything running within our Kubernetes cluster. And right now you should see multiple pods, some services and deployments for the back end and front end, as well as replica sets being created. At the moment, they're probably in a container creating status. And this is because Kubernetes needs to pull the images to its local registry. But as soon as the images are ready, the pods will begin to start. So we'll wait a second and fast forward. Now to see the application in action, simply head to localhost in your web browser and the application should be live. Sweet, so we can see it in our browser, but you're probably gonna notice that there's no way to add entries to our application. And this is because we haven't provided a connection string yet for the backend to connect to a MongoDB instance. For example, if we happen to check the logs for one of the recently created backend pods, we can see that there's a placeholder for a connection string. So we've ran into a slight issue, as this demo is using a placeholder for the MongoDB connection string, which needs to be replaced by a valid connection string from our Atlas cluster. This issue can be taken care of with the MongoDB Atlas operator, which allows you to manage everything from within Kubernetes and gives you the full advantages of using MongoDB Atlas, including generating a connection string as a Kubernetes secret and later on using that in our application.yaml file. This is a huge advantage because this means that we don't have to leave our Kubernetes environment to collect this secret and that we don't have to hard code it anywhere within our files. Now let's talk about using the MongoDB Atlas operator for Kubernetes. So the Atlas operator essentially bridges the gap between Atlas, the MongoDB data platform, and your Kubernetes cluster. By using the operator, you can use kubectl and your familiar tooling to manage and set up all of your Atlas deployments. Particularly, it allows for most of the Atlas functionality and tooling to be performed without having to leave your Kubernetes cluster. Installing the Atlas operator creates the custom resource definitions that will then connect to the MongoDB Atlas servers. The installation process for the Atlas operator is as simple as running a single kubectl command. So all of the source code for the operator can be found in the GitHub repository. We'll go ahead and do a kubectl apply 
and apply the all-in-one operator for MongoDB Atlas. If you haven't already though, head to the Atlas registration page to create your free account. This account is going to let you create a database on a shared server, and you're not even going to need to enter a credit card to use it. In order for the operator to be able to manage your cluster, you'll first need to provide it with an API key with the appropriate permissions. Firstly, let's go ahead and retrieve the organization ID. Go ahead and log into Atlas, and in the upper left part of the Atlas UI, you're going to see an organization name and a dropdown. Right next to that dropdown is a gear icon, so let's go ahead and click this icon and open up a page called Organization Settings. From this page, look for a box labeled Organization ID. Go ahead and save that organization ID somewhere for future use. For me, I'm going to install it in an environment variable that we'll then use later on to create our Kubernetes secret. So, being on a Mac, I'll go ahead and do export org underscore ID and then enter in the organization ID that we just collected from Atlas. If you're using Windows, you can do the same command, but instead of using export, use the command set. Next, let's go ahead and create an API key. From the same screen, look for the Access Manager option in the left navigation menu. This is going to bring you to the Organization Access screen. In this screen, go ahead and click Create API Key. This key will need the Organization Project Creator role in order to create new projects and clusters. If you want to manage existing clusters, you'll need to provide it with the Organization Owner role. Go ahead and save the API private and public keys, and you can add them to the environment Again, using an export command. So we'll go ahead and do export atlas public key and then enter that in. And then we'll also do an export atlas private key and then enter in our private key. And of course, if you're using Windows, again, you can use the set command instead of the export command. We'll go ahead and start creating our Kubernetes secrets now. So once you've created the API key, you can go ahead and specify those values to the MongoDB atlas operator. By creating this secret in our Kubernetes cluster, this is going to give the operator the necessary permissions to create and manage projects and clusters for our specific Atlas account. You can create the key with kubectl, and to keep it simple, let's name our secret MongoDB Atlas Operator API Key. For the operator to be able to find this secret though, it needs to be within the namespace MongoDB Atlas System. We'll go ahead and run this command which can be found in the guide in the repository, which will go ahead and create a generic secret from our organization ID, and then also our public API key and our private API key in the namespace MongoDB Atlas system. Next up, we'll have to label this secret, which is going to help the Atlas operator in finding the credentials. So we'll do a kubectl command and label our secret, specifying the secret that we just created, giving it the type credential and putting it within the namespace, again, MongoDB Atlas system. Next up, we'll create a user password, which we're going to need a password, of course, to use our database and access our database, as well as create new databases as well. So you don't want to just hard code this password into your YAML files because it's safer to save it as a Kubernetes secret. So just like the API key, the secret is going to be labeled too. We'll go and use the kubectl command to create a secret, and this is going to be our Atlas password, and the password is just going to be mernk8s, and then we'll label this secret Atlas password, and then put it again as a credential. Now we're ready to go and manage our Atlas projects and deployments from Kubernetes. Now this can be done with the three new CRDs that were added to our cluster. These CRDs are Atlas project in order to manage projects, Atlas Deployment to manage deployments, and then finally Atlas Database User to manage database users within MongoDB Atlas. If you haven't worked with Atlas before, these are three big building blocks that allow us to work within databases. So firstly, we have projects, which allow you to isolate different database environments from each other, as well as users and teams. We've got deployments, which are instances of MongoDB running on a cloud provider. And then finally, we have users, the database users that have access to MongoDB database deployments. Now the process of creating a project, a user, and a deployment is going to be demonstrated in the next few minutes, but feel free to skip past this and apply all of these files within the Atlas folder on the repository. So we're going to go ahead and create a project. So we'll start by creating a new project in which the new cluster will be deployed. In a folder called operator, create a new file called project.yaml, and we're going to throw in this specific code snippet, which you can find in the Atlas folder in the repository. 
We're going to be using the Atlas Project CRD, uh, specifying the MERN KS project, and then creating a new project, which is going to have the title MERN KS. And we're going to allow access to the database from anywhere, but of course, only do this uh, for the demo as it's best practice to only open it to known IP addresses, as mentioned in the comment. So next up, we'll go ahead and create a new database user. In order for your application to connect to this database, we're going to have to have a database user. To create the user in this same operator folder, create a new file called user.yaml and we're going to add in this following code snippet. Again, it's using another one of the CRDs, an Atlas database user. Our user is going to be able to read and write to any database and using the secret that we created earlier, the Atlas password in the MERN KS project namespace. Finally, we're going to create our deployment. So as we have a project set up and a user to connect to the database, we can now create a new deployment inside of this project. Within the same operator folder, create a file called deployment.yaml, and we're going to add in the last code snippet. This is going to be an Atlas deployment, so it'll be creating a new free deployment on AWS using the M0 cluster within the US East 1 region. So here we're going to be again referencing the MERN KS project in our Kubernetes namespace. We're going to be creating a cluster named cluster0. And you can use a similar syntax to deploy in any region on AWS, GCP, or Azure. Awesome, now that we have everything ready, we can go ahead and create this new project in Cluster. You can apply all of the files to your cluster using kubectl apply and by specifying all of the files within the operator folder. Now, this may take a few minutes to propagate, but you can see the status of the cluster and project creation with kubectl doing the commands kubectl get atlas projects and kubectl get atlas deployments. While we're waiting, let's go ahead and head over to the atlas UI. The project should already be created, and you'll see that a cluster has already been created. Let's go ahead and get our connection string. So getting your connection string to this newly created database can be done through Kubernetes without even having to access the atlas UI. Once your new database has been created, you can use the following command that uses jq to view the connection strings without using the Atlas UI by converting JSON from base64. We're going to throw in this kubectl git secret command and translate it back from base64 to view the plain text version of our connection string that you will be able to use for an application. Now that our project and cluster are created and we're able to view our connection string, you can access the various properties from your Atlas instance. You can now access the connection string and even configure your backend service to use that specific connection string. We'll go ahead and connect our backend to our database without actually specifying the connection string, instead just using the Kubernetes secret that we created earlier. Now that we're able to find our connection string from within Kubernetes, you can use that as a part of your deployment to specify the connection string to your backend. In your original application file, change the env section of the containers template to the following. Instead of using the template string that we had earlier, we're going to use the same connection string that you've just seen in your terminal by applying a Kubernetes secret. Once we've changed our deployment, you can now apply those changes to your cluster using kubectl to update the deployment. And we can take a look at our current pods. You should see that your backend pods have been restarted. You should now be able to test the application with the backend connected to our newly created Atlas cluster. Just head to localhost to view the updated application once the deployment has restarted. You'll see the application fully running using this newly created cluster. Congrats! In addition, as you add items or perhaps clear the entries of the travel planner, you'll notice the entries added and removed from the collections tab of the cluster zero database within the Atlas UI. Let's take a look at our database using MongoDB Compass with the username mernkds and the password the same as we set previously. From here, as we add and remove entries, we can see that they update automatically within MongoDB Compass. Now, let's finish off by using kubectl to delete the Atlas cluster and project and clean up our workspace. We can delete everything from the current namespace by using kubectl delete. We'll firstly go ahead and delete the Atlas deployment, and then we'll go ahead and delete the Atlas project. 
You now know how to leverage the MongoDB Atlas operator in order to create and manage Atlas clusters from directly within your Kubernetes environment. We've only demonstrated a small amount of what this operator can do, so feel free to head to the documentation in the description below to learn more. If you're using MongoDB Enterprise or perhaps Community, there's also operators available for those, and they work in a very similar fashion. If you like this video, feel free to give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the MongoDB YouTube channel. Have a great day.